After nine already. Another hour. That's bloody fucking nail. I give you enough time to sleep it off. Mighty hospitable. Not hospitable to troublemakers. Yeah, partner, you uh, know where a fella can find some work hereabouts? Not likely the kind of work you're looking for. Folks around here are good, honest, God-fearing folks. Honest, God-fearing work's what I'm after. Go down to the Golden Garden. Saloon? It's honest enough for the likes of you. Much obliged. Indeed you are. Looking for some company? Uh, I should be so fortunate. I was... I was just looking for the boss man, actually. My time ain't available for purchase, sad to say. You the fellow in charge? Owned an operator since 69. Took over for my brother when he up and caught the cholera. Solomon Miller. Bob Hagen. Innkeep down the way said he was looking for extra hands. Might could be. You have experience pouring spirits and libations? Ain't that the same thing? Pardon? Uh, I poured my share of drinks, Mr. Hagen. I bet you have. Now, the crux of it's here. I need me a fellow who can handle a rough customer or two. Keep an honest account and don't go drinking up all my wares. On your man. And don't go molesting the whore. Quickest way to trouble is when the staff starts philandering. So you mind your business and leave these whores be. Understood? Hey, much for company. Just need work. All right, Mr. Miller. Welcome aboard. Sherman's bloody asshole. Oh, here it is. Ah, might as well look the part. Miller! And as I said, this position requires more than a steady forward hand. So empty the spittoons, the piss pots, Rouse the dozers, make sure the bar is fully stocked at all times. Make sure the bar is fully stocked at all times. And don't go spilling my liquor. Whiskey. Now, it's two bits a shot, no freebies, less than I say Put so. Put your far. clock in your bitty and pour me up some bitchin' whiskey. <clears throat> Apologies, Bob. I'm just a thirst, that's all. Better. Miller? Give the man a bourbon. Yes, sir. New in the job, huh? Just minutes now, sir. 
I'll grant you some patience then. But just enough. Much obliged. Indeed you are. Dilbert himself what done it. Strange day. Getting stranger. Not the first I've seen gunplay under this roof. But Dilbert didn't even look mad. Sauntered on in, casual as you please. Murdered old Walter right where he sat. As you say. It's getting stranger. Miller, do a check of the rooms. Make sure the piss pots is empty. There we go. Ain't seen you in here before. Uh, just started. Um, Solomon Miller, the new barman. I'm Blondie. Yes, ma'am, you sure are. Heard that one before, huh? Piss pot's full in room five. Um. Hey, fella. Damn it. Hey, fella! Who the fuck are you? I'm the new barman at the saloon that owns this here shithouse, and I need you to move so as I can empty this here piss bucket. Fuck off. Come on, friend. I need the place for a snooze. I said fuck off. What's the matter, Sonny Jim? The work too dirty for you? There's some damn fool drunk sleeping in the outhouse. I... You say what now? I said there's some damn fool drunk asleep in the outhouse. Oh, that's probably old Zeke again. Or else that sorry some bitch and send him packing. I tried. You said what? I says I tried. Well, try a little harder, Miller. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, it doesn't take Sir Isaac fucking Newton to kick a drunk out the shit house. I didn't. Are you a lackwit? Is that the problem? No, I. <laughs> Just, I, I learn didn't. yourself when to hobble your lip, boy, or you'll learn yourself new means of employment. Now follow me close at hand, because I won't be showing you how to do this again. Um. No! <laughs> <laughs> you fucking madman. Goddamn near tore my ear off. Boarding house is over yonder if you want to snooze. This here house. It's for shitting. It's only napping a spell. Ain't for napping spells. It's exclusively for shitting. Peace. If you ever disrespect my employee again, I'll stick your ugly mug in yonder shithole and you can nap till perdition, you drunken fool. Will you quit your all right now? My head is being torn apart by hungry dogs. Caprito? Yes, sir. Now, listen, you need me to hold your pecker while you piss? I'm going back inside. Evening rush is opinion, Miller. Make sure that piss bucket is cleaned out, but good. Your dollar's short. I'll take it out of your wages for the day. Keep a better account. Yes, sir. Here's your pay. Thank you, sir. You post up in room six. You should get in there so you can get some sleep. Um, I'd take some time to head to the room and house, fetch my belongings. Very well. 
Just be back at dawn to rouse the overnighters. Dawn? That's when the sun comes up. Yes, sir. Dawn it is. Stables down the way. Still, uh, saving up for the horse to go with it. Uh, we've not been properly met yet. I'm Solomon Miller. Stella. How do you do? Awful. You? Right there with you. You're here most early, Solomon Miller. Oh, well, Mr. Hagen says I'm the Rouse the Overnighters. Ain't none. Say again? Ain't no overnighters. Then why'd he have me come here at dawn? Because he's an insufferable prick. <sighs> Obliged. Nary a drop for yourself, Mr. Miller? Decided I'd abstain for a while. Get a load of the world through unhindered eyes. Might not like what you see. Not so bad so far. How long you been slinging spirits? Pouring whiskey since I was five. Started drinking it when I was 12. Here and there I spent some time on a bar, among other things. Ran a herd up north a while. Tried my hand at prospecting, wouldn't get out for it. <laughs> Fell in with some undesirables for a spell. Ooh. Do tell, Clarabelle. <laughs> Pardon? Did I offend her in some way? Probably. You all right there, Cowboy? Old Walter getting his head blown to bits got you rattled some, huh? I doubt it's Mr. Miller's first sight of bloodshed. Uh, you two not... ladies think about maybe sit a little closer to the door? Maybe bring in some patronage? From the fucking graveyard? What'd you say? I don't suffer wise acres, much less wise acre whores. Now you get your five dollar ass out there and bring me in some goddamn business! There's a foulness in the air in here. Indeed. You said what? Oh, I, I just... Right, take your effects. You'll be sleeping in room number six. And get to filling them water jugs. All right. So room six, water jugs. Yes, sir. And any more wise acre comments earns you dock and pay. Something out there. Did you not hear it? 
Didn't hear nothing. Where's the water jug? I, I dropped them. I don't know. You break them jugs, you're going to pay for new ones, Miller. It wasn't my fault. There's something back there. All right. Tell me what you saw. I didn't see it, but you didn't hear that sound? It was like a howl, like nothing natural. Ever heard tell of a coyote? I goddamn know what a coyote sounds like! Hey, now, don't you go hollering at my horse. Now, you apologize to the lady. Good and quick, boy. Apologies, Kate. I... That'll do. I'll get to filling them water jugs. Would you lend me the shotgun? You say what? I asked you for the shotgun, Mr. Hagen. What for? You don't care a pistol, Miller? We're bigger than a coyote, whatever I heard. Maybe a mountain lion or... You send me back outside unarmed, you're marching me to dangers unknown without a means to defend myself. All right. Hasn't a man got a right to defend himself? All right, I said. Settle down there, Edwin Booth. And don't go shooting no customers. Cow one jug, where's the other? Dropped and broke. Cost of that jug coming out of your wages. Don't be breaking jugs, boy. If there's nothing else, I'd like to catch up on a few hours sleep. I'd be better used to you with a clear head. Go make sure them piss pots is empty. my cigarettes. You in the habit of taking things that don't belong to you, Mr. Miller? Maybe you shouldn't have such free and easy access to fire, Miss Blondie. Darling, you may have yourself a point. Look at that! You are a believer, ain't you? Used to keep time with a magician. Picked up a few tricks of the trade. You see, Mr. Miller, sadly, the strange and miraculous is so often easily exposed by dull and disenchanting facts. I think there's more fun in the not knowing. And personally, I prefer to stay in the dark. Give me a start there, young fella. Apologies, sir. Uh, well, um, can I get you something to wet the old whistle? Take it down a notch or two, Miller. Young man ain't here to partake in our wares. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Miller. I'm Benjamin. You're the new barkeep, I take it. 
That and I empty the piss pots. Speak your message and be on your way, son. Well, the Reverend asks that you attend a small funeral service this afternoon for a Mr. Walter Knudsen. And when does this funeral take place? Around about four. That's our rush. Can't be done. Well, the Reverend suggested that you leave charge of the new barkeep. After all, why have hired such help if not for occasions such as these? I can handle it, boss. If you need, want to take a few hours, go pay respects to your friend. Walter was not my friend. He was a royal pain in the ass if I'd be telling the truth. Nah, but he was a good customer. So be it. The evening rush is on you, Miller. Yes, sir. Keep an honest account. Don't go drinking up my wares. Leave them whores be. How long are you in town for, Mr. Miller? Uh, a few days. Any plan on staying? Ain't really planning on anything at the moment. Just taking it day by day, you know what I mean? Putting it in God's hands. Yeah, something like that, I suppose. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Miller. Settle down now. <sighs> well, I guess you ain't abstaining no more. Shouldn't be much of a crowd tonight, but you'll still get a cluster or two. Folk ain't traveling along much around here. And make sure nobody's thinking drinks behind your back. I'll keep a watchful eye, sir. See that you do. Don't go burning the place down while I'm gone. Ain't gonna be no rush. Nah. I have suspected. Once a month or so, a crew ride in, but mainly it's the odd straggler. Bob can barely afford to feed himself. Lucky Kate and I don't eat much. You're playing with fire, girl. Batting your lashes at that man. He's trouble with a capital T if I ever seen it. Always grateful for the advice from the dead woman in the corner. Rot in hell, baby girl. How's that for advice? Have I given some sort of offense, Miss Kate? Your very presence gives offense, Mr. Miller. Why don't you shut your damn mouth? Don't bark at me, little poodle. I'll break your goddamn jaw. Don't you threaten harm on me. I won't be bulldozed by some dried up dope fiend. Boo, bitch! Well, Jesus, the two of you settle on down. <laughs> All right, boys. Not another word till whiskey past these lips. Time to get this fornication engine running. Don't nobody want to hear about your cock. Well, you'll hear about it nonetheless. Oh, man! Howdy, friends. What can I do you for? Whiskey for the boys, one for the lady, and yours truly. Room at the bar for one more? More than Mary, Missy. You the fella gonna be squaring this account up? What do you say about that, boy? Say, welcome to the Golden Garden, sir. Whoa! Another! Whoa there, doggy. That's one fine piece of pussy. Pull me a fresh one. Well, my boy Dave is gonna have a go. One for me. Thank you just the same. Oh, horse shit. You know what you need? A good old taste of Jack Nasty Face. That'll set you right. Well, hey there, you get back on that bed there, missy. My boy David's gonna have a go. And a spell, I need a drink. I said get the fuck back inside! 
Then you get on in there and you plant your flag, Davy boy. I said no. You devised it. You think humiliating me means it never happened? You shut your mouth, punk. You deal with the hell you deal, Patrick. And I'll do the same. I'll wrestle with the demons as you do. There's nothing for me to deal. And I've got no demons neither. How dare you implicate me with your goddamn degeneracy? I say I want you to take leave of your fellow. No, shut the fuck up! Right top of this bar and I beat you until you stop breathing. Don't threaten me, cowboy. Or oh, what? Or oh, what? Or I will physically remove you from this establishment. Oh, really? Why don't you just show everybody how you're gonna go about doing that? Go on. Get out, I said. Of course, my friend. My apologies. Why don't I just square up with you, okay? And me and David here, we'll be on our way, okay? <laughs> you literally live a son of a bitch! <laughs> Skinny mini. It takes quite a while to kick a man to death. Hey, Davy, empty the cash register. Davy, empty the cash register. I think I'll finish my drink first. Davy, empty the damn cash register. What's <laughs> Sure. Drop that iron, you ugly bastard! I blow this horn to kingdom come! All right, all right, just, just, let's stay calm now. You, she didn't do no harm to nobody. Just turn loose to her. We can talk about what happens next. Baby boy! Jesus Christ, you, you gunned him down. You gunned the both of them down. No, I know. I'm sorry. I, you killed my boys, you son of a bitch! Stop! Stop! I, I didn't mean no harm to those men! They attacked me first, unprovoked! They would've killed me just fine! A man's got a right to defend his person! True enough that. A man's got a right to take vengeance, too. True enough that. You turn loose to the woman, and I'll take her place unarmed. You can deal with me as you see fit. No tricks, Cracker. No tricks. Throw the gun out. Now come out where I can see you. Turn loose to the woman first. Show yourself. Show yourself! More support on the left there. Supporting it. Uh, where's Hagen? Seen them whores? Rusting his voice, I suppose. It's his establishment. Shouldn't he be assisting in the body disposal? Guess he's delegating them duties to me. Suppose that's fair enough. It wasn't him made all those corpses, was it? Well, look at here. It's the Angel Gabriel. Good evening, gentlemen. The Reverend has asked me to assist you in the burial of these men. Well, your timing is a testament to God's holy plan and action. Got one left inside, and he's a big in. Are you well, Mr. Miller? Fine and dandy. Don't love nothing in this world more than hauling corpses about. You're right. Stupid query. Why's this town of no undertaker anyways? Hanged him. Got him committing unnatural acts with the corpses. Jesus. Yep. Back when the mine was spitting out gold nuggets like baby teeth. 
Swansea was to be the next tombstone of Bisbee. Folks from all parts of the world rode through here, brought a little culture and civility to the place. Some even brought their families. But party didn't last, as they never do. Mine went dry, decent folks moved on, and now we're all but a ghost town. We're still here, Sarah. <laughs> Indeed we are. All right. Let's get that bastard squared away for his last ride. But Sheriff, I, what are you doing? You'll see. Dear God, what have you done? Peace now. This is blasphemy! Better than they deserve. And you're the one who decides what they deserve? What do you deserve, Mr. Miller? What the hell did you just say to me, boy? That's enough now. You may not like it, Benjamin, but that's the best I can do for him. You boys gonna come on or you gonna stay and warm yourselves by the fire? Hey, boss. How's that job? Oh, um, it's the best. <laughs> Good. Good. I spoke at length with Stella and Kate, and uh, they told me you acted the hero. That you saved them. And you saved this joint from being robbed. I just, just what any man would do, Mr. Hagen. Not true. A lot of men would have just tucked tail and ran, but you, you put up your own life for Kate's. I don't know you well, and I don't know what other things you may or may not be. But for one, you ain't no coward. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, now get on in and get some rest. That was real brave, what you did today. Still? in the flesh. What's the most scared you've ever been? I don't know. <laughs> Quit lying. I already let you have your wig with me. Up north, after I was run out of flag for whatever drunken misery I engaged in, I, I passed through pace. Asking after work, I met a well-dressed gentleman with a fine way of speaking who told me he was a professional 
photographer. I nursed a small interest in such instruments and their methods, so I thought myself fortunate when this fine gentleman offered me a job as his assistant. On my first day, I followed him to a fine looking house on the edge of town and got inside, first thing I noticed was the smell. Uh, Mr. Miller, if you please. Get on with it, please. Any moment, sir. Any moment. Yes, much better. Much better. Younger miss, now perhaps you hold your brother's hand. Go on, darling. It's for Willie, so we don't forget his face. Kid, like some stuffed raccoon. Folk turn to strange comforts when they're in that kind of pain. I suppose. This and this uh, can't happen again. I need this job. And... Can't be caught molesting the whores. You ought to Why don't you get out of here. All right. James, you don't have to tell me twice. No, no, no. I mean, get out of here. You know, find yourself a nice fella. You have yourself a family. Oh, darling. That train left a long time ago. Oh, come on. You're just, just a kid. I eat when I'm hungry. Got a roof above my head. Plenty of booze. Big strong man to protect me. What else could one ask for? I care for you, Solomon. Stella. I'm... Don't begrudge a girl her silly little fantasies. Miller, I got a private matter to tend to, and I will need you to open by yourself. Yes, sir. And hopefully, I won't be returning to a pile of corpses. <laughs> yes, sir, hopefully. Stella, get your ass outside. Bring in some business. Miller, keep
keep an honest account, and don't go drinking my whiskey. And don't go molesting the whores, Mr. Hagen. Don't be overly familiar. I'm your employer and not your bosom chum. Any more remarks or back talk or over familiarity results in a dock of pay. Make sure them piss pots is empty. He's back at the hatchet like normal anyways. Thank you. We're nothing. You're quite the hero. I wouldn't say that. No, neither would I, but here we are. Good people do terrible things. Stands to reason terrible people can do the occasional good thing. Terrible's a bit strong, isn't it? Strong and accurate. Oh, Jesus, what? Huh? What is it? What do, what do I do or, or, or say or what tiny aspect of my manner offends you so? <laughs> what, is it just my face? What, I remind you of some phantom from your past, some relative who bullied you? <laughs> Stop it! All right. All right. That was your way. Consider that a fair payment for saving my life. Now make your arrangements to be gone from here. Pardon? Collect your remaining wages from Hagen and leave town. Why the hell would I do that? If you don't, I'll tell him. Listen, the horse will get you fired without pay. Get the hell on! God damn cadger! Don't piss on a sleeping bag, will you? I will, and worse if I catch you sleeping in my outhouse again! I'm a good goddamn customer. Ain't I entitled to a little respite when no one else is using the shit house? You're entitled to shit and move along just like everybody else. You test me, Ezekiel, and I'll rise to the occasion, believe you me! Hagen's a good man. He done more for me than some sod like you could ever comprehend. Get the hell out of here. For his sake alone, I don't break your scrawny ass in two. If you threaten me again, you're a dead man. The hell with you. Hey, you're tough. You're tough when you're walking away muttering, you drunken bastard. How's the crowd been? As you see.
there's a foul air about. You hear me, Miller? I said, there's a stench in the air. I hear you, Mr. Hagen. Any thoughts about how to remedy that? Well, I'm no expert on masking unpleasant smells, sir. Uh, um, maybe some flowers or the like? <laughs> flowers. Mm-hmm. That'll be $2, Doc Bay, on the day. I've warned you time and again about the wise at your comments. Might could be time for Mr. Miller to move along. Seeing as how he just cuts in the frog direction. I could be. Save a dope fiend's life one day. They throw you in front of a carriage the next. <laughs> I didn't throw him in front of no carriage. Yes, you did. You're trying to get rid of him when Solomon's the only reason you're still drawing breath. Stop your hollering, Stella. No! Two of you have memories of fucking horse flies. Solomon's been nothing but good to you two, and you treat him like dog shit. I said, stop your hollering, Stella. I don't have to warn you again. To hell with you, you old bastard. Don't you can't stop. Fuck you, old man. Get my hands off you. Damn it. That's two dollars, Doc Pay! That's two dollars, Doc Pay! It's always open. You got a way of appearing out of thin air, you know that? I have a soft footfall. I guess. May I speak with you a moment, sir? Not in the best of moods, Benjamin. I heard some shouting imminent from the saloon. Is that a miss? <laughs> a hell of a lot of ought is a miss there, I can tell you that much. I see. Save Kate's life. She turns on me like a rabid bitch. Hagen's one day treating me like the son he's never had, the next like his red-headed stepchild. Seems quite unfair. That's an understatement if ever there was one. Stella stood up for me, no doubt earning her more suffering ahead. Jesus fucking Christ! Mr. Miller, may I be frank with you? Frankly, I'd rather you leave me be. You're suffering. Perhaps I've overstepped my bounds, but to see a soul in such torment, you must understand that God loves you. And he can forgive you. For do I need forgiveness, boy? We're all sinners. And we're all capable of asking God for forgiveness. Ask him, Mr. Miller. Open your heart to the Lord and he will respond. No, we won't. Cold blows the wind Oh my true love So falls gentle rain I never had But one true love And in green would she last slain In the twelfth month and one day I passed, ghosts began to speak. Who is it who sits upon my grave and will not let me sleep? Die on own true love. Who sits upon your grave? For I seek one kiss 
from your sweet lips and that is all I crave my lips say ours play my love my breast is song Had you one kiss from my cold lips, your time not be long. Pardon, you are right. Not with my head. I I need water. All right, all right, all right. Just, just, just wait here. Just wait. Jesus. I said for you to wait outside. How'd you? Here, you just. Drink that, be on your way. <laughs> All right. Thank, that's that's fine now, if you please, just... You should not be here. Pardon? That is so much pain here. What? What are you... Sipino Tegan Hilfa, you are a sick man. All right, that's just about enough of... Inside, Damon! Murky. Whoa, that was odd. What the hell is murky? What's that supposed to mean? It means Miller needs to keep a more watchful eye. They ain't holding a shelter for errant beggars. Beg pardon? I said she's a lone woman come up front asking for some water. So she didn't buy booze or pussy. This place is for paying customers only, not creepy crowd beggars. Blow it out your ass. Say again. I said, blow it out your ass, Mr. Hagen! Out! Get out! That little outburst just cost you a day's pay. I will not be spoken to with such insolence. I do not suffer wise acres, as I've told you many times before. God damn it! Apologies, Mr. Hagen, for the outburst. It's been a strange couple days and it's taken a toll on me, maybe. We've all seen horrors of the same or more. If you can't manage it, maybe it's time to move along. Go and take the rest of the day. Get out of here, get some air in your lungs. Go and see the Reverend. I don't want to see the Reverend. That's what he's there for. Time's eternal. I don't need to see no Reverend. I just need to work, sir. I just... 
I'm sorry. I know. I made mistakes, but I don't need time to to think or, or feel or, or, or reflect or any of that. I just I just need to lose myself in something so I don't have to think or feel or reflect. I just I just need to work, sir. Please. Don't want to see them piss pots is empty. Yes, sir. Stella. Come here, girl. I think this poor player has strutted long enough, don't you? What do you want? What's happening here? Oh, sweet baby. Don't you understand? You've lost your mind. We gotta get out. Kate. Kate told me that you fucked her. Is that true? Tell me the truth! I didn't mean for it to happen. It's just. you here anymore, Mr. Miller. Bob and Kate don't either. I'll give you inside of a day to leave. And if you darken this door again, I'll cut your fucking balls off. to me. Kate says you shot old Ezekiel. She's a liar. You, you asked Blondie, all right? She was walking, looking out the window when it happened. Hey, Blondie! Miller. Who you hollering at? Blondie, the goddamn witchy blonde in room two. She was looking out the window like always. She must have seen. She must... This is what concerns me. What? There ain't no Blondie here. What? No, she's I never just... employed no whore named Blondie. No. That's not possible. You're wide awake and dreaming, son.
It's always the quiet ones. Just something about them. <clears throat> Still waters run deep, as it said. Still waters also draw skeeters and plagues and such. Mine needs a wash now and then. Clears the bugs out. Funny how the killing spirit overtakes a man. Decent seeming fellow. Polite enough for company. Takes a dark turn of mind. I should have known you was trouble when Walter's head went kablooey. I ain't blaming you necessarily, but some folks possibly through no fault of their own are just bad medicine. Mr. Miller, I don't think you've met Deputy Donovan. He's a specialist of sorts, the man I call in when people think they're being smart by being quiet. I prefer it when they stay quiet. Gives me a chance to experiment. People take their fingers for granted. You never realize, for example, how much you missed your left pinky. You think you and your pinky finger would be together forever until you're old and arthritic and finally rotten in the grave, forever bound. <laughs> All it takes is one good swing. And you're changed forever. And that pinky finger? Dead meat. Tasty morsel for the dogs. You're a maimed man. Marked forever as a walking symbol of loss. A few more swings. Twists. Turns. <laughs> You're changed even more. Monster. Cripple. A pile of meat. So my question to you, Mr. Miller, isn't if or why you shot that <laughs> peck of wood. My question is, do you think you can adapt? For example, do you think you can chew with every other tooth? I did it. See what? But I do believe that's a record time, Deputy. State it loudly and clearly, son. Deputy Donovan could go home. You can get some much needed rest. I shot him. He was, he was sitting on the john and I blew a hole in his face. Why? Deputy. Why? He disrespected me. I told him, I told him time and again, you can't sleep in the goddamn shithouse. And Higgins pissing in my ear about this and this and that and every other goddamn miserable thing. It's unrelenting. Just a gushing river of shit and misery. I can't, I can't, I can't look to no hope of love or Christian charity. I'm forsaken to a miserable, dusty inferno of piss pots and fat, foul creatures that paw and prod and gush their foulness all over. They're pigs. They're all goddamn pigs, and I've had enough. 
You hear me? A man's got a right. A man's got a... You're gonna pay me for the whole night. <laughs> I don't need this madman bellowing at I'm me. I'm not a madman. Shut your hole, Miller. You'll take a dollar's pay as per our agreement, deputy. God damn it. Thanks for nothing. Shit, kick up. He's a good man. I doubt that very much, sir. Yep. Sure. Sure. Sheriff? Dragon, you put that pistol down on the ground because we can speak as gentlemen. He had a gun. I told you, see? I just missed it before. He had a gun, Kate. I said, put that shooter on the ground. I will fire upon you. Where's Sheriff Hoyt? I don't know. Fire. It's no lie. He left me in an unlocked cell. Did you kill him? No! No, no, no! I didn't... I'm no murderer! I only shot Ezekiel because he took a shot at me first. I tried to disarm him, and he pulled his side iron, and he fired at me first. A man's got a right to defend himself. She saw! She saw, and she lied! She was jealous! Jealous of some imagined tryst I had with Miss Stella! I am beset by conspiracies and lies! You simple son of a bitch. 
I told you not to go molesting them whores. Nothing but trouble. Many a better man have been laid low by the same. The eternal bane and burden of mankind is women. <laughs> Where's Blondie? There he goes. You got a fever in your mind, sonny boy, but it's not your fault. It's in different nature. I'm no madman. You are. I said no. You are. No! <laughs> are you a church going man, Solomon? I told you already no! I told you many times more than you can read a clock. Don't go molesting my ah! oh! You want to survive in this world, boy? God, there's no sympathy and laziness. Ah! I resign. Sorry. Agus Magain or Fiacal. I will verify his shinya. Dar Lok Fia. Preacher of the word around these parts. Come closer, son. I can't see you. What's happening here? What's wrong with these people? Why am I seeing things that are there one moment and gone the next? Why did he leave me in an unlocked cell? How did I get here? Ask God. He will answer. I am sick of hearing that! He won't answer! He never has, he never will. You've been alone for a long time. 
have it you, but God has always been with you, like a patient father loving you always. To so what does he torment me? Is it God that torments you? Or is it you yourself? What does that mean? Are you without sin, my son? Sin. I've sinned terribly. God will forgive you. Thirst. You know, if we could find some water or coffee, hell, even whiskey. You see, my horse, she faltered ways back and put her down. That was some weeks ago, I think.
You got him, Mike. He's dead before he hit the ground. It's deserted, seems like. Except for him. Hello there. Don't try to talk till you're done puking. <laughs> Gather some timber. I know the, the look when it takes him. Go on ahead, Mr. Jackson. As far as we could tell, the little fella Ike shot. Who's shooting at us screaming, die, goddamn you, die, die, die. I told him that already. Okay, it was self-preservation if there ever was a case, Marshal. We told him that already. Now, you came upon this town. There was a madman raving and firing at you. You shot him in, in your own defense. And then? Bodies, sir. All propped up with ropes and boards and painted. To... Stuffed and mounted like goddamn animals. He wasn't right in the head, Marshal. Or even such as he was. Must have hit him hard, all that death. And then to, to desecrate him so. It was indeed, to me, a troubling image. Me as well, sir. Do you see that among these bodies were them all two prostitutes? Well, we figured them for the sort. Being in the saloon and all. Hmm. Did he... Was there any evidence that this man you speak of, this madman, did, did he engage in any acts of lewdness with the bodies of these women? We don't know, sir. He didn't take time to ruminate specifics, Marshal. We set that town and everything in it ablaze. I'm sad to say that we couldn't risk giving any of them folks a proper Christian burial. They burned where they lay. You boys did the right thing. Um, let me make a record of this, pass it on up to my superiors, and we'll take it from there.
Spirit fly into.